का इंडियन फिल्म एंड टेलीविजन डायरेक्टर्स एसोसिएशन की तरफ से मैं आप सब लोगों का स्वागत करता हूं अपने स्वागत के लिए तालियां बजा दी आपने दूसरों के स्वागत के लिए तालियां बजा दिया करो कभी कभार एनीवे इंडियन फिल्म एंड टेलीविजन डायरेक्टर्स एसोसिएशन की तरफ से अपने ईसी मेंबर्स और सारी डायरेक्टर्स फ्रेटर्निटी की तरफ से हम आप सब लोगों का तहे दिल से स्वागत करते हैं हमारी ये अठारहवीं मास्टर क्लास है एटीन मास्टर क्लास एंड टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट इफ इट आज इज वेरी मॉच इन हेड एंड इट्स रियली वन ऑफ बिगेस्ट अचीवमेंट्स ऑफ दिस डायरेक्टर्स फ्रेटर्निटी दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो मच ऑफ एजुकेशन विच द ग्रेट मास्टर द ग्रेट फिल्म मेकर Shared their experiences in this auditorium. A lot of new people come. A lot of people who have already who have come here so many times. So today is our 18th master class. We have been doing this master class for the last two years, and all celebrated great filmmakers, writers have been a part of this master class. And we all feel very thankful to all the directors. writers who have really supported and stood by this organization of us that's it clear now to begin with let me uh give certain instructions before we start the master class and i'm sure you all are with us on this it's a very serious business here what we're trying to do that's why you'll not find any media in this must be like a school is like an institution and if you don't believe in serious business i request all of you to please put your mobiles on silent mode or switch it off because we are very strict on that portion if any mobile is heard being ringing we seize those mobiles and we don't return it back and we have done this earlier so it's not we are it's not that i'm just like hey hold it up hold it up hum kar chuke is as good as uh, as serious as drunk and driving you know so every say so what in i think we all will appreciate this seriousness of ours secondly when uh, the master class begins uh with the director there's there's a question answer session which we have last half an hour 40 minutes the questions should be related only to that director's work There should be no personal question on asked. We need your email IDs. We need your phone numbers. हम आपके audition में आए थे हम वह हमारा क्यों नहीं हुआ क्यों नहीं हुआ मैंने इतना अच्छा acting किया था क्या नहीं किया मैंने वो मेरे से सितान चतुर्देश से बेटा मैंने audition दिया था तो वो सब नहीं होना चाहिए Let us respect the maker. Let us respect uh, the person who has given so much of time to all of us. Otherwise, it's very difficult. It's not easy to have such classes and such. you know uh, give and take as far as students and uh, uh, master the concern now uh, today's master class is being moderated by a person who is a very well known filmmaker she is an ex fti alumni having specialized in editing she has assisted filmmakers like mankaj parash and jp dutta abbas mustan She was a creative head at Icon 18 Motion Pictures. Her short films have been nominated and won awards at various competitions including the HBO Short Film Festival. New York 2016 for Chutney and the Film Fair Awards of 2017 and 2019 for Chutney and Plus Minus respectively. Her Plus Minus has got the Film Fair Award just a week back. I invite one of the finest filmmakers, writers, a member of Iftira, Jyoti Kapoor Das, on the stage. I'm very really thankful to uh, Jyoti uh, for accepting this request of us uh, of moderating this masterclass. I request our general secretary uh, Kukuboli to 
uh, maker, filmmaker to come on the stage. On behalf of Mr. Dad, we would like to present a, a trophy to Jyoti. This is our trophy on Mr. Dad's behalf. And a very well designed poster on behalf of Mr. Dad, which has been designed by a very well known filmmaker uh, who is a pillar of our organization, Saurabh Varma. Uh, please hand over the poster. This is a small bouquet. I request Jyoti to take a seat and Ukuji, uh, please. And now, for what we are waiting. This person doesn't need any introduction. She's a youth icon. Everybody wants to become this director. I'm quite sure when I when we go to colleges and schools and institutions, everybody is inspired by this director. And we all are. Because she has created magic as far as Indian cinema is concerned. And we really want to applaud her. We really want to tell her that you are magic, you are brilliant. And you are one of the finest filmmakers of this country. I invite Zoya Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we're all very excited, we are all very happy that we have Zoya with us today for this masterclass. We also have a, a very well known uh, film uh, producer who has uh, uh, accepted our request to come and present a trophy on behalf of Uttara to Zoya. He has produced uh, films like uh, the latest hit, which was Total Dhawal, uh, Bazaar, Titni Marathi, Bhatti Gul Mita Chalul, Messing, Satyamay Jayate, Sarkar Tri, Great Grand Masti and Tata Panchnama. And most of Faraz really party films. I invite a philanthropist, a person who really means to this industry, who really stands by the industry, stands by Ifrida always. Whenever I've told him, he stood by us. I invite Anand Pandit to come on the stage. Please. Thank you, Anand, for coming on the stage. I request uh, Anand to present the trophy on behalf of Riftera to Zoya. Thankful to you, Zoya, for giving your precious time. You are in Delhi, you especially came for this. Uh, it's a moment which we all will remember. And I'm quite sure all of us sitting in this auditorium will take full 
advantage of this great movement of this master class. Believe me, such master classes, such people are together. It's a very rare moment. So all the students, everybody sitting here, ये मानकर चले कि हम अपने परिवार में बैठे हैं, अपने फैमिली में बैठे हैं, अपने ड्राइंग रूम में बैठे हैं। Let us all enjoy, let us get that positive feel, let us feel that we are all part of the fraternity. We are all going to be big stars in all the, you know, various faculties, whether they're director or writer. Everybody sitting in the auditorium is a dreamer, is an achiever. And I'm quite sure people sitting here are all achievers. They are all going to do well in life. I'm quite confident about it. That's why we are here. किस्मत अच्छी होनी चाहिए कि आप ऐसे माहौल में बैठे हैं और ऐसे लोगों के बीच में बैठे हुए हैं मान के चलिए इस बात को ओवर टू ज्योति कपूरदास एंड जोया थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच मुझे बड़ा होके जोया अख्तर बनना है सो एंड आल्सो इफ आई एम नॉट रॉंग she is the first uh, woman director. I'm not a genderist, but I'm not going to lose the opportunity to say that this is the first masterclass by a woman director from Bollywood, <laughs> hardcore commercials, so which speaks at the box office as well. That matters a lot. So I'm going to dive right into it. Your first film, Luck by Chance, is a film about an outsider who's a struggler, something you would never know in real life okay, because, <laughs> because of who you are. But it was such an authentic take, and um, you also addressed this horrible N-word nepotism in that film before it became a bad word in the real world, where uh, in spite of all these actors, including Farhan's character Vikram giving an audition, it was Ritik who gets cast, and you know, which is really what the truth is uh, has been. And how did you, you know, you transport yourself from being this, you know, second generation Bollywood girl child? to the kind of very, very authentic tongue-in-cheek writing that you did? Uh, firstly, thank you very much for having me here. I uh, remember the first time I uh, was working on a movie. I was 21 years old and uh, I was asked to join the union and I got my card, my Iftara card, and I was like, I'm part of something. And to be here today, sitting here, it's, it's quite surreal. So thank you for calling <laughs> me. Um, and yeah, coming back to your question, um, I, I don't uh, uh, look at, you, uh, like my dad was an outsider when he came to this industry. My mom was actually the insider because she was a child star since she was yeah. two years old. Yeah. Uh, so when you grow up and you grow up around, we grew up around a lot of artists, Farhan and me. They were not just film people, they were poets, they were musicians, they were actors, they were uh, a lot of assistant directors because my mother was an assistant director. Uh, so I, you always had that inside outside in the house. There was, yeah. it wasn't just full of, you know, I mean, of course I grew up going to my friend's birthday parties and we were all part of the fraternity, but all their parents had come into the industry. Uh, I was an assistant director for many years and I didn't necessarily work in the Hindi film industry. I worked with Meera Nair, I worked with Dave Benegal, I worked with uh, Mahesh Mathai, I worked with an American filmmaker called Tony Jerba. So I was never part of the hardcore Indian. Bollywood. <laughs> yeah, Space Till Dil Chata happened. That was the first film actually that I worked on. My parents um, never uh, really got us a job anywhere. We, we went and got our own jobs and we did our work and uh, when you're in industry and you're, and you're an assistant and you start from PA and then you're a second second, then you're a third, then you're a second AD, then you're a first, then you're an EP, you've been through the grind and through that process you've hung out with junior artists which is where the, where the film, film is. started from, you've hung out with superstars, you've hung out with everyone and uh, I am a writer so I take notes, I... Uh, uh, I'm interested in the process. I've always felt um, like an inside-outside person anyway. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was very easy for me. So, how many songs did you study when you came out of the picture? How many people said, you did it on me, right? No, actually, <laughs> the only people that appreciated at that time were the, was the media and the industry. Nobody <laughs> else saw it. So, the industry loved the film and uh, the media was really kind. And it, it, so that they were, they were the ones that actually gave me some kind of validation. Otherwise, it didn't make any money. Okay, that's uh, 
it was too early i think for its time at that I think point so, maybe. But, but now we come also to um, you've been collaborating a lot with reema who's your partner in crime really yeah. so what's your uh, you. what's the process like we thank you ashok ji <laughs> uh, reema and me met on I a so. film we were i think 20 Three years old or something. We met on a movie called Bombay Boys. We were both hired as second assistant directors. We were both second ads, and we started working. We got on really well, and uh, uh, we were like we should write together. And we started just bouncing ideas off each other, writing short film scripts, fighting a lot. We fought a lot, but whatever we wrote was there was something to it. And then I was like, we can't work together. So I wrote Luck by Chance. She wrote Honeymoon. We uh, would uh, get stuck and exchange the script. Like I would just give, send her my script. She would write scenes. She would send me Honeymoon. I wrote scenes. So we just worked like that. And then after that, we just were like, let's just bounce ideas together. And Zindagi happened in. I think we wrote the actually Zindagi was our first draft together. I mean, wow. we filmed the first yeah. draft. Oh, you did! Wow. Yeah, we wrote it. Wow. And we uh, went to a certain amount of a uh, bunch of actors that were very young, and they they didn't do it. So then we rewrote it to make it about people that are in their thirties, early thirties, and that was the only rewrite we did. We just changed those things. Wow. And the next thing I knew was uh, Farhan was on. Ritik said, "I can shoot in three and a half months. Are you ready?" So we never worked on the script again. That was it. We just filmed it. I'm so scared to see it now. <laughs> we we haven't seen it since. We're like cool. we filmed the first draft, huh? But that's organic, right? Yeah, that's, it just happened, so cool. and then after that, we've just worked together. That is so cool. And you stop fighting now or not? No, we still. <laughs> so probably, I think the secret of uh, doing a good film is to fight with your co-writer. Maybe also. No, to have different think, strengths. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think yeah. to have different strengths. I think to uh, because she's from a very different world. uh she grew up in assam she was educated in boarding school uh she was in delhi uh she was has a very different experience from me she was always in like a girls school a girls college a girls hostel my experience was completely different i was a bombay born and bred kid yeah. from the industry uh, uh i grew up with only boys uh i was uh, uh, i was in zavier's then i was in new york our experiences are completely different our family structures are completely everything is different uh so we bring very uh unique things to each other's work uh but at the same time our uh, our value system is the same our politics is the same we are on the same side of the fence we believe in the same things we uh our sense of right and wrong is the same i think if those things are not aligned then i don't think you can co-write okay. i don't think it's possible also i think a lot of mutual respect right between people who are collaborating you know yeah, that you should respect yeah. and uh, i mean we have a, we have rules if uh, the script is being written and i am directing then my word goes if the script is we are writing a script and she's directing then her word will go the last oh, word if we are arguing so that just nice. sorts it out you know otherwise you can fight till the cows come home that's nice that's yeah. nice and it doesn't matter that you're also a uh, part of the company that produces most of the work that you guys do all so now we have started tiger babies yeah. happen yeah. now yeah So earlier we were uh, yeah. working as freelance directors with Excel, yeah. Yeah. but now we have our own company and we'll go produce. Yeah. So, जो भी आपने फिल्में बनाई हैं, like by chance हो या even your short films, you know, with with Bombay Talkies and Last Story, ये सारे मुझे लगता है एक जो चीज़ है कि आप expose करते हो अलग-अलग दुनियाओं को. आपने फिल्म इंडस्ट्री को एक्सपोज कर दिया आपने अमीर लोगों की जिंदगी एक्सपोज कर दी आपने मिडिल क्लास लाइफ्स एक्सपोज कर दिया मेड इन हेवन में आपने बहुत अलग अलग किस्म के लोगों का यू नो अक्रॉस स्टेटस अक्रॉस सेक्शुअलिटीज मोटिवेशन बहुत सारी बिकॉज इट्स अ वेब सीरीज यूर गेटिंग दैट प्लेटफॉर्म टू डू इट 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 टेक्स अ लॉर्ड ऑफ आई थिंक आपका जो uh, आपके जहन में जो इतने सारे वर्ल्ड कोलाइड हो रहे हैं How do you just maintain your sanity with all that? How do you? you know? I enjoy it. I actually am very curious about people's lives. I like going to places, meeting new people, eating new food, meeting their families. I enjoy it. I like experiences that are not my own. Um, I also read. So does Rima. I don't think you can be a writer if you're not a reader. I personally yeah. don't believe it because there's a sense of fiction we were both literature students yeah. so there's a sense of fiction there's a sense of story that comes in uh, you know a, a creating a world there's something that comes out of books that I, i i don't know it's just organic to you yeah. how you see a space uh, when you're reading it just gives you a certain sense of how to develop characters build characters what happens otherwise is then you know i see so many films and i'm like this writer has only referenced hindi movies 
Hmm. You're, you're, there's no other ref. I mean, it's not like there are any unique stories. Everything's been told in various ways. I mean, Gully Boy, okay, maybe a story about a rap, a rapper from Bombay yeah. hasn't been told, but it is an underdog story. He yeah. could have been a boxer. He could have yeah. been a runner. He could have been yeah. anything. Anyway. You know, uh, so that underdog story making it has been told five million times before. How do you go in there and change it? And I think the two things that really helped me were I got a degree in literature and sociology and I wanted to do film and I was already working in film and I told my father I want to quit and my father told me he'll disown me if I don't finish my graduation <laughs> and I think that was the best thing he did because sociology and literature has really okay. helped me yeah. in my writing yeah. today you know like uh, how to approach a space a world how do you how do you create a world how do you see the dynamics how do you see the socio-economic space of that and what that does to them and what that they do to the system around them. Mm -hmm. I think that is just those layering and subtext that come from reading, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So will you um, just share with us the, you created part of the slum of Dharavi in which was really amazing. I mean, it was, Suzanne's just a rock star. I think she's, you know, the production designer that you had. She uh, created the two of you together, you know, made that whole slum as a set. And can you run us by, you know, how long it took, what did it, I mean, how do you even think that, okay? You know, you know, we didn't want to shoot on set. Like, we didn't want to be in Film City and, you know, Ritesh was like, it'll be easier and actors. And I was like, I can't shoot this film in Film City. Like, it's too fake. Yeah. You know, I, we need to be in the world. We need to be in the middle of it. So we used to, anyway, I used to keep going and hanging and, you know, just observing things and taking photos and chilling out there and just walking around and stuff. And Suzanne was like, let's find a space within, like, let's have the world around us. So what we did was we went into the Haravi and we found a parking lot. And I don't know how Ritesh wangled it, but he got us permission to build on that parking lot. So if you see it, if you see the thing, yeah. it, when, if you see the before and after, it's like, it's just all of the Haravi and one hole in the middle. And we built the set in the hole. So it was just an extension of what was already there. So you couldn't go wrong. And Suzanne is just an incredible yes. production yes. designer. So what she did was she bought all people's, you know, people's old doors, their old utensils, their old blankets, their old everything. And she just replaced it with new stuff. So they were happy and she could create a slum that actually looked but like an extension of the rest of it because otherwise it just sticks out, yeah. you know. So it, it was that whatever you needed was just there. And the people are so nice they're just so cool they're so collaborative they're so cooperative and they're so not starstruck that it was amazing to work there so it was okay having ranveer singh and alia bhatt in the totally yeah. they, wow. nobody nobody bothered us nobody bothered us wow. they just left us alone wow because they're so used to foreign films yeah. you know and they really look at it as work they have a lot of respect for what you're doing and if you respect their space and don't think that you can go in there and just own it you know, you respect their space. You move out of the way when they want to walk. You treat them with respect. They are very respectful back. It's just, we had a really good time there. We did, we were like, oh God, now we have to go into Bombay city and shoot after being in a cocoon. It was just really uh, easy shooting there. Easy. So most of your, your films are, I mean, either they're set completely outside or in Bombay. So we're hearing rumors of Gully Boy Delhi. Would you... You know, how are you going to manage to... Uh, you know, the thing is that uh, uh, hip-hop is so specific from the cities that's, that it's in. There's a huge scene in Chandigarh. There's a huge scene in Delhi. There's a huge scene in the Northeast. There's a huge scene down South. But it's very different from the Bombay scene. And uh, so I don't want... You know, when you say I'm do, for, uh, doing Gully Boy 2, that's not yeah, what we yeah. want to do. Uh, exactly. We want to do another... We want to do another chapter. We want to do another fresh story. So that's where we, we started work. On. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, everybody um, knows, okay, this is this, you know, this girl whose brother is a director and her dad is a writer, poet. And a lot of people seem to forget that Honey is a really, really uh, kick-ass writer. She's directed. She's she's obviously a very, very strong influence. When when uh, you know we, I'm old enough to know her work, and I know that she's also got a very strong hold on emotional 
content, which is very strong even in your filmmaking. So is it is it organic? Is it something that, I mean, did you, you know, when you grew up and matured and became a professional, did you kind of revisit her work as well? And Yeah, I mean, but she started writing. I mean, she was an AD when we were growing up. And I, I remember uh, going to FTII with her because she did a film appreciation course in FTII and Farhan and me were kids and we were in Pune. She we attended were, that. Yeah, 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 we were there. Yeah. We were in FTII for a month. Wow. We'd go in and out. And you so still said the institute in luck by chance. Yeah. Okay, like, okay. So we... Uh, we, and she actually exposed yeah. us to a lot of films. We watched every Everything. foreign film because yeah. of her. And we didn't have those rules growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dekse, te, only dekse. Like something would, you know, some sex scene would come on and be like, close your eyes. Huh. And, like, you know, we were, yeah. we were never treated like that. Yeah. So we watched everything. Okay. While growing up, and I, for Farhan, he didn't even. I went to NYU. Farhan didn't even do Go film school. Yeah. His film school is films. Wow. He's just watching movies. He's just watched everything there is, you know. So, so that came from my mother. My mother watched every film possible, and it could be Japanese, it could be Spanish, it could be Brazilian. Wow. It was. I mean, she watched everything. She watched all the masters. So we saw everything with her, and uh, she had a projector. Wow. Uh, so yeah, we had you know prints coming. My dad would get prints from distributors, and we'd watch stuff on our wall. I saw Godfather on my dining room wall. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, my mother has been a huge uh, influence in terms of that. She's also a very, she's a good editor, you know, she's a good writer and she's got a good sense of it. She's somebody that I give my scripts to and she comes in and sometimes we wish she would lie, but she's just, she <laughs> doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's just like, please cut this, it's extremely boring. <laughs> she's like that, there's no... And, and, and you don't tell her that you are not the audience, you are not the audience. She is actually the audience. From all of us, she is the actual wow. audience. Because wow. she, goes, she goes to the theatre, she actually watches everything. So, so, yeah. cool. so, so also, I mean, the whole, the whole emotional you know, flavour that, I mean, she's got a very, very strong emotional... Yeah, but both know, of so them yeah. do, so does yeah. my dad. Yeah, they both have a very. Strong but a lot of people tend to, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but a lot of people really tend to discount or forget that Ali yeah, yeah, yeah. is a big influence. You know, yeah, you're yeah, always yeah. presented as Javed. Absolutely, Akhtar. you're right. So another thing that very very bad joke, but I have to share it here because your dad's a poet, and I think he just wrote your name out in Urdu, you know, Zoya to A to Z, but in Urdu ulta aise. So yeah. it's like A to Z of, of cinema, but so cool. And I think it's time for us to probably uh, throw it open for Q&A. So I'm sure there's... So, um, I'll tell you, when you made the short story pehle banai, the film that you did for Bombay Talkies, that was such an out of the box, you know. A child who is a girl and she wants to dance to Sheila and she obviously his father is freaking out ki, what what is happening here and his little how did you even come up with that that was you know i honestly think like there are like you're so removed from any uh, like when you're not norm i can't say it that way but when you don't fit in mm -hmm. when there's something that's unique there's something different and there is no reference point to it in your world you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, and for the longest time in our country, I mean, homosexuality so or yeah. any kind of gender fluidity was considered, I mean, either you were like a eunuch or then there was nothing else. Yeah. Everything was in the closet. It wasn't talked about. It wasn't referenced. There were no, there's no reference. I mean, it was yeah. illegal. Yeah, it was illegal. You know, it was illegal. Yeah. So when you're a little kid that is not going to fit in, it's not the typical boy or the typical girl, and there's nothing in that little town for you to uh, mm -hmm. look at and be like, I can be I'm okay. like that, yeah. Uh, you can attach yourself to cinema. And I think uh, it, it, it comes with, you know, you grab onto something and that gives you hope and that gives you a resonance and you believe something big, larger than life, larger than your life. Yeah. And that's where it came from because what can cinema be for you. I mean, it was 100 years and I just thought it would be really uh, nice to have somebody look at looking oh, actors yeah. and yeah. What, what are they holding on to? What are they holding on? If he sees a Katrina Kaif interview, which to us is an innocuous, like, yeah. random interview, yeah. 
Sahib is Sahukar. It means so much to someone who will take his own or her own meaning from it and hold on to it because actually it's not being provided for. That sense of you can be or you can do whatever you want is not provided in our real life. Yeah. And we look to cinema for everything to be okay. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and for you, the, the, you know, the transition from making films exclusively for the longest time, whether long format or, or short, just changes when you do the digital uh, you know, content, mm -hmm. which is very clearly episodic, but there are characters who are also traveling and growing and you know you're in this uh, space where probably you know the, the the people commissioning it tell you it needs to hold on for eight episodes or whatever how did you wrap your head around as as a as a writer director on that and a producer of course that's still a different uh, you know game that you're playing there to kind of break your your we practice really of so many years of doing different formats to digital so uh, i mean it is a very different beast but as a storyteller you know you have a lot of ideas and some ideas are good for a short film some ideas are make great features because it's the kind of thing that could drive an audience to a theater you know and there are some things that you feel will be better in a long format you know so when we had this idea because a very good friend of ours works in the wedding business wow. so we had this idea of doing it but it made sense to do it episodically because there was so much to Sorry. say yeah. so you could keep changing the backdrop of it yeah. um it's a different beast to write eight hours of content yeah. uh, definitely because you have to realize your story has to hold through and through uh but you have a lot more time to develop characters you can layer you can nuance you can really take yeah. your time to unravel a story and peel an onion uh, you uh, don't have censorship yeah, which is very which liberating is yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you don't have box office pressure you don't have somebody uh, calculating your opening weekend yeah. so it's purely on merit it's basically what we were like as kids when we saw cinema nobody knew yeah. what the collections were you liked the movie you didn't You're like the judging movie it. yeah I, do, I don't even know from my childhood which films did well and which films didn't I just know if I like them or not which is how it should be actually you know and and you had and you had different teams working on the different episodes so how do you marry uh, because you know they've they've also got to buy into who the characters are and also the we had the four directors treating, but yeah. we had one showrunner nitya yeah. who was there yeah. throughout it was written mainly by alankrita and me yeah. reema me yeah. created it and then alankrita and me actually wrote the scripts yeah. so all the scripts were written through so everybody had the scripts we had okay. really good actors yeah. once the actors catch their pitch it doesn't matter yeah. who the director yeah. is they've got their graph going so you know it was yeah. so it's not that hard uh, so to speak and we had a director's tank and we had a writer's room so we all knew mm. the kind of uh, uh, so, look and feel we wanted yeah. you know mm. and uh, because each wedding changes it was also it's, interesting yeah. for them to bring their own style in to each yeah. wedding so that was allowed and that was needed so I think yeah. it worked out yeah and now you know um, what you've done with the feature film space, with the short film space as well, even with Last Stories and... Now, Bombay Talkies was, a, was supposed to technically, and it did release theatrically in theatres, whereas Last Stories was straight to digital. And making content so different, because even thematically that was 100 years of cinema, this is Last Stories. Uh, did you already have the stories or were they, did the producers say, you know, this is a theme and we want you to now no, they give us a it. theme. Okay. Yeah, there's a theme. We kind of decide the theme together. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to do a theme that four of us don't agree on. Yeah. So we decide something together and then we do it. Yeah, it's fun. It's super fun. And then, and then how, you know, how long, so, you know, for example, because a lot of people find short films a much quicker uh, format to work with. It's, it's more feasible. There are less pressures. So it's a great format. Yeah, so... But yeah. what's your, what's, you know, how long, you know, what kind of luxuries do you get in terms of the time that it takes to write and to shoot and to... No, see, I mean, like, we have a deadline. Like, if we do another installment, which we're planning to do, they would want us to deliver uh, by August and 
because so they want well. to. Yeah, they would, suppose. Uh, I mean, then we have the, we can do it whenever we want. So if you yeah. want to write a short film in a day or in a month, it's up to you. Yeah. You, have, you have a delivery date and that's it. So you get your thing and then you do it however you wish to do it. Uh, I like the format because I think it's like a little movie. Yeah. You know, it's got, I mean, it's the same, way you yeah. cinematically approach it the same way, yeah. you know, uh, though you have much less cash. But yeah. even then, yeah. Yeah. you cinematically approach it the same way and you design it and you, I mean, it's just, it's a movie. Like for me, they are movies. Would you would you write backwards to you know when you're saying much less cash? So, you know, okay, in this amount of money, I have to make it. Would you yeah, then you would you then that. write? Yes. Like, would it dictate your content? Yes. yes. So you have yeah. to be very prudent yeah. about. Yeah. Yes. You would be. Yeah. So did you? Uh, I'm asking because so you got you were, were they more indulgent in Bombay talkies because it was already no we had the same budget a, pretty much yeah we had the same budget on both. Yeah. So also when you when you did you know you did Luck by Chance, which was this completely uh, genre bending film, which was so different from say uh, you know other films that deal with, and I don't think I can take names, but other films that you know superstars have acted in, which are homages to the Bollywood industry, where everyone is shown as being friendly and nice and everything. And in your film, you just very you know ripped all the layers apart and said ki haan bhai struggle karna hai haan bhai nepotism hai haan bhai uh, logo ko idhar uh, you know uh, affairs karte ho to wo ek media mein chala jayega where is you know other things where uh, and the very next thing that you did was this really cool europe trip which everyone was like what happened here because i think everyone expected that acha zoya that's going to make something again more hard hitting or you know uh, relevant or something and it was just a, I mean, it was a fun i think uh, i think zindagi is very relevant yeah, it is. because it i is. think yeah, i mean it's like you it know it is i think it was just so unexpected you know i think people just you know thought that you would do something more more bombay and more grounded and and yeah. you just took everyone on this trip to spain because and they throwing tomatoes at each yeah, other <laughs> I, the thing is I, I want to make like all kinds of movies. I I, I don't I'm, I don't have, have a yeah, yeah I, I'm not very genre specific. Yeah. I, I like I watch all kinds of films and I want to make all kinds of films. I definitely definitely want a gangster film. Yeah. I am really yeah. looking for a script. If anyone has one, please yeah. contact yeah. Excel or Tiger Baby. I am <laughs> desperately <laughs> wanting to make a gangster film. Like that's my so favorite cool. genre. genre. Yeah. It's my it's it's. Those are the films I can watch no matter what time, where the movie is halfway. If Scarface is playing, or Carlitos is playing, or Godfather is playing, or Goodfell, I, I will watch it from wherever it is. So th that is my favorite genre. Dying to make one. So I am not into like I should make the oh gully boy. So I should do only musical dramas. Not at all. I yeah. I want to just keep doing whatever I like. So um, yeah, I don't I don't uh, function yeah. on what people are telling me to do. So how how long was the process in Gully Boy? I mean, you know, you were doing research for a long time. Gully Boy started. I started like churning with it while I was editing Dil Dhadak Ne Do because that's when I saw uh, Nazi's video. Yeah. I didn't know the scene existed. I had no idea, and it blew my mind that there was legit hip hop coming out of the city. So I had to explore it. I found him. I met him. I just started hanging with him. I started going to his shows. Uh, then I met Divine at one of his shows. Then I started interviewing him. And then we would just call them and interview them. We interviewed a lot of artists, but these were the two that you we just stuck with. Yeah. So uh, then they took me to you know where they lived, where they uh, their slums, where they live now. I met their families, met their girlfriend, met their friends, met their life. And then when we started soaking stuff in, we started writing. So I think I started writing the script in 2015, after the release wow. of Dil Rakh Do. I had already started the process, the yeah. So I started writing it and by 16 it was done, but it got pushed by a year because of Ranveer. Because he did Padmavat and then they had yeah. issues, yeah. so that got pushed by one year. But you had the script ready then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we would have shot one year earlier, but uh, Padmavat just got pushed. Uh, delayed yeah. and then he was in the film and yeah. I wanted to yeah. wait for him. Yeah. Uh, it got delayed and then it had all that problem with the yeah. film. So then it got pushed further. So we had to wait and then we had to give him two months to lose to his lose body yeah. because he was yeah. so big. Yeah. So we had to wait. <laughs> yeah. So we lost a year and all that. So the, one of the really, really cool things in really cool things was um, from that one little line which I will never stop reminding you about where 
Anurag Kashyap's character Luck by Chance is narrating to Rishi Kapoor's character Romi uh, Roli and you know he's trying to get very arty about me he says oh institute and that to us was so funny and you you know you you were really relieved I think that that is the that, that is the that, that, <laughs> that is I have to say he ad-libbed it in the middle of the scene and I just collapsed I didn't <laughs> stop <laughs> laughing when we cut Anurag had fallen on the floor and yeah. I just had to keep that it was very funny I just and you know he was like ah don't ask me to do it again no. I was like it just came out it was just Oh, yeah. Amazing! I know, it was, it was really yeah, cool. It was, but and I think we all were so happy. You know, the FBI crowd was really happy because we were like, "Acha Hindi picture ke andar kisi ne institute bola." It's like, and then from there, you took Vijay Varma, who is an institute graduate, yeah. acting student, Vijay Plug, and he, the film starts with him. And I've spoken with him, and he said when he read the script. He didn't realize it was going to be such a long take. You know, he just said, he comes and he starts walking Moin, and and then he just calls these two guys, and then they. And the carjacking, and when he actually did it, he realized it's such a big deal. Mm-hmm. And when I was watching this film, and I went in cold, and I'm, and it starts with Vijay, and I was very thrilled because I'm like, yes, yes, film institute actor and bona fide and everything, and and he's walking and he's walking and he's walking, and then he just does this, and and then the two punters at the back, you know, like he goes and here, he can Vijay is like, and suddenly you realize. ये तो रणवीर से ही है मतलब he's just just this ordinary guy just so cool and so brave because you're not cashing on रणवीर the star but you see you know like different films are for different reasons so there is a, a you know film like रणवीर has shown me a film of his where his entry is like some three minute slow motion and I'm like dude are you serious Okay, and he's just like coming in, you know, and it's fab, and it's like everyone's throwing cash and screaming, and but that's it's so it's, it's purpose in that film, and it, it's made for that, and it's a star vehicle in that sense. But um, uh, for for me uh, personally, I I'm not into that. Like I I feel like it has to give you a sense of uh, who this person is, and. Murad to me is not the leader of the pack at that point. Yeah. Murad to me is not he's not the one in in the position oh, of any yeah. kind of power. And uh, in that group it's Moeen, Moeen yeah. who is the who's the top dog. He's the alpha. Yeah. And uh, you know so he just comes in and he's an innocuous guy who's yeah. part of this guy, but he doesn't he's not leading the night. Yeah. And then you get into his life, and then even when he meets Shay, I don't know if people notice this, but this is tough for me. Um, he goes to Shay's house, and they come out. He's walking behind him, you know, uh, yeah. and he's out of focus, and the shot is on Shay, and you realize that he, these are very strong influences in his life. And the only time you see him where he's moved up is when he's walking into the club at the end, yeah. and his friends are walking behind him because that's his night, and that's the kind of. Graph. So that's the graph and that's the growth because uh, you you know you want people to come into a movie and not think of Ranveer Singh. You want them to think of Murad. So I'm I'm again being a little uh, whatever. But would you have? I mean, you you know, you've worked with Ranveer before, and so there's obviously a chemistry there. You found somebody whom you can work with on other uh, content as well, which is very different. I mean, Gali Boy, and, and then as far apart as as it can be. But uh, could there have been an option to run? Basically, I'm just saying. You know, would you have auditioned and just probably? Of course. I mean, see, at the end of the day, when you are dying to make a movie, there's always an option. I mean, at the end, I, I have never made this. Gali Boy is the first time I made a film with my first options. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm the queen of being rejected, so I don't really. Really, tell us more. I mean, I'm almost, <laughs> I have never made a film except for Han and Zindagi. Everyone else has turned on every film. <laughs> yeah, all, all the films. And then have you got like calls later on saying Arey Har? No, but you know that they are saying Arey Har. You know it. Ah, dear, dear. Yeah, they are not saying, but you know it. Sometimes some people say. So, so yeah. you think now? I mean, after after especially this stupid. I mean, and it did so well at the box office. And we are we are really stoked about it because. It was as out there content as possible, and all kinds of people came in and saw it. And you did yeah. open up the whole hip hop, yeah. indigenous Bombay hip hop scene for everyone. So it did well, even at the box office. A great time for content. You think it's going to change? You think people now are, you know, be calling you and saying, "Hamarle kuch banado." No, I mean people will uh, only do what 
suits them. In the sense like tomorrow an actor may be dying to work with me, but he may have come off two tear jerkers and doesn't want to work with one that I'm making. Or right now they don't have that kind of time to give. Or it has to suit their life and it has to suit my hair. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't take these things so seriously because it, it, you know, we've established like earlier it used to upset me. Like it was yeah. when I tried to make my first film and it like, took me seven years. So much for nepotism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It took but me. But you didn't even make I mean, Kismet Talkies was. was yeah, I did. No, two yeah. films got shelved. So I mean, it's not easy. No one has it easy. Yeah. It's a myth. Yeah. You know? So it's not easy. But once you make your film, and though the film made no money, I have a lot of actors calling me and saying, yeah. We want to work with you because act, the good. <laughs> You know, they also know that this person can tell a story or this yeah. person can't. Yeah. So my second film was easier, then my yeah. third film was easier, then the fourth yeah. film was easier. So it is there, but at the end of the day, it's what you want, what I want to make right now and are you free yeah. and are you in that headspace? Yeah. Because actors have to connect with, you know, it, it's a very strange job acting. So uh, uh, you can't expect them to be in that mood. They have to be in a fit of feel, Yeah, they have to feel it. And um, now, I mean, have you found it easier after... Uh, so, obviously, luck by chance, you're saying, I'm, I'm still, I need to go do the numbers on this. I'm very surprised you didn't. But you're saying it didn't do well at the box office, but you still got to, you know, you got a chance to make your second film and your third. So it's getting easier to make films, but... What you're doing is you're also making different kinds of films. So when you're embarking on a, like when say you're, you know, you've come fresh of uh, Dil Dharapne Do, which was this, you know, it, it was it was full of color and, and uh, good music and you know, the really aspirational, but obviously it also has this subtext because you're not just a fluff. There was a lot of other hardcore realities in it, but ostensibly it's a very happy, colorful film. And then you're going grunge into and I'm not even I'm not talking about your last stories that you did in the middle and all the other shorts. But the thing is that you're going into a grungy feature film. Is that a little intimidating for you? Do you feel you know your your I mean you have the luxury of I find it very exciting. I find it very exciting to be able to like I was really excited to shoot on a trip. I was really excited to shoot on a ship. I was really excited to shoot this world in Haradi. I was I, I yeah. mean I find it exciting to go into a space that I haven't been in before. Like for me, is my scary? Yeah, my idea of boredom is everything I do would be on big sets. Like I would be bored out of my brains. Like I would love to do one film which is all set in it because I've never done it. So I think I'll be excited to do it once. But if I, I, I don't think I can repeat the same experience again and again. It would be very boring for me. Which is why I'm not... Uh, Crack the sequel space yet. Yeah. You know, I'm just like it like, just mean a repetition now. It, yeah, I think I, I need to I need to approach it in a way or the idea, even if it's the same thing, like say it's in the game, I keep getting asked um, uh, about that. Is if either I crack the idea in a way that is fresh, so even if it's a trip, yeah. it's still something so different emotionally that it works for me. Or then it's something else because otherwise I feel like I've already made it. I've done it. But have people have people asked you what happens to these boys? Do you want to follow the boys? People, yeah, funny that song at the end is there because of the focus yeah. group. They were like, "Kya wo mar gaye?" And I'm like, "Are you serious?" You know, so they are, like the audience wants to know what happened. What did his mother say? I mean, like beyond the point, the movie's over. <laughs> yeah. So are, are you? Are you? Uh, you know, I mean, just to be uh, weird, you can even do a short film about where they are now. And that would be like a really crazy yeah. quote. No, I mean, I would, I would be happy to do it, but it would be a different, like, I would not call it two, yeah. anything two. I would give it a completely different title, and it should be a film that you could catch. And if you haven't yeah. seen the first, it's a movie. It's it's sense. Sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, it has to be uh, approachable in that way. Then it's exciting for me. Otherwise, I just feel like, I, I don't want to, I personally, that is personal, huh? mm. don't want to do that again, because, I, I mean, I've done it. So also Vijay Maurya, who's this fabulously talented uh, writer, and he did the dialogue for your for, for your film. Uh, how was it? So so you know, do you do you write in like Hindi English together first? You know, Rima, when you're writing, how do you 
What's that process like? Yeah, in English, we have a completely detailed dialogue draft, like detailed, like you can film it in English. It's completely that. Then, uh, uh, like earlier, my dad's written dialogues and Farhan's written dialogues for me. So this is the first time I've worked with someone who was not, not part of my family. Yeah, so uh, Vijay came in because uh, my dad was like, this is so specific that you need somebody who... The language. Yeah. So I called Anurag actually and I asked him to <laughs> recommend some people to me. And he recommended Vijay. And there were some other people had recommended to other writers. And I actually sent 10 pages to each one of them, the first 10 pages. And I was like, can I read your work and then decide? And they were like, okay. And uh, Vijay's was just like the closest to what I wanted. It was really good. And I met him and I told him what I felt. He is, I can't tell you how fast he is. He's so fast. He, he just bangs pages out. And uh, so we just, he did the first half completely. We sat on it, we did a whole round where I felt like this didn't resonate for me, tweak this, tweak this, tweak this. And then he did the second half and we did that process on it. And then we sat with the rappers. So I had four rapper kids. I had Altaf, yeah. Emiway Bantai, uh, Rahul Piske, who plays Chindu in the film, yeah. and Kambhari, who's Kunal, four of them. So they came in and we narrated it to them and then they changed a lot With of the lingo. lingo. And Altaf and Rahul Piske were on set all the time that we shot with the boys. So we had like, uh, yeah. They were like coaches. Yeah. They were dialogue coaches. And they were like 19 and 20. How cool. It was amazing. Yeah. How cool. So, and, and Vijay then also did the role of Mamu. Yeah. And so what, that, was in, that was later. Oh, he was cast. No, while I was oh, working so. with him only, I was like, uh, because I know he's a really good actor. Yeah. So Nandini and me were like, what about him? And, and you had seen him already in, in Sulu? Or, or yeah, no, no, I've seen him. I've seen yeah, him through the years. Yeah. And uh, uh, he could look like Amrita Subhash yeah. and he could look yeah. like they belong to the they same were, family. Yeah. And so he was just perfect for it. So I asked him and he said, okay. How cool. Yeah. But then you, you do feel uh, it's important. To, but you know, okay, English dialogue, when you're writing in English, the sur that you have uh, for Hindi, if the grammar, of course, is different. And so, when you say when your dad is writing for you, so maybe I'm expecting with your brother it's still an easier relationship and you can always, you know, go like, oh yeah. But when it's your dad, how how open is he to taking your suggestion because he's a master craftsman himself, but you're the director of the film and also his daughter and then how do the dynamics I mean mostly it's been good, but we fight. Yeah. We fight. And then who wins? I mean me. Okay. <laughs> It's all because I'm making the film, it's as simple as that, that's really me. Yeah. Unless he convinces you that. Yeah, but I mean, it's, there has to be, like, he's, he's extremely rational. So if he's, uh, he understands my logic or where I'm coming from, then... So it's democratic. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, when you're the director, you're the director, you've got to feel it. Yeah. Simple. So cool, that's very empowering, right? I mean, she can say no to Javi Rattar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit at the dinner table with him later on and be like, okay. Yeah. And then when the film comes out and does really well, you go like, see, I told you. So yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. But now, uh, how much do you workshop with your actors when you're, uh, you know, going to go into shoot? I, I there... workshop. I don't like ironing things out on set. Yeah. I, uh, do, uh, I do sessions with the leads, like alone. Uh, so we go through only their scenes, all their scenes, and they, we talk about all their scenes. So they have a sense of it, they write their notes. Then I workshop, I, I work with Atul Mongia. Yeah, oh, he's fabulous. Yeah, I work with him, and I have a very good relationship with him. Uh, so we uh, do workshops with characters, and uh, we kind of find the voice, the pitch of that character within those workshops. So they find their suit in that workshop. That's the aim yeah. of that workshop. Once that is done, we read. So everybody's kind of got their vibe and we do reading. So then I'll do a session with say Ranveer with his family, Ranveer with Alia, yeah. uh, Ranveer with just the boys, yeah. Ranveer with Sher. Then I can do, I'll do Alia with obviously Ranveer, Ranveer. Ranveer. then Alia with the family yeah. and uh, Alia and Albina. That's it. Yeah. So I'll just do the key stuff, you know. Uh, but family dynamics, I do all the big scenes, you know. So I'll do individual stuff but then I'll break it up also. So it's also not boring for the actors. And also chemistry, yeah. Yeah, and so we do all that, and then everyone's kind of prepped. And then once you get to set, because you're in costume, because you're on location, because, you know, everything is suddenly Mama, real. Yeah. yeah, and you know, the alchemy is only different. Yeah. Then something else happens. Yeah. When we block, then then you, you're so prepared that 
you're happy to experiment and you know go find the magic at that point. So I I like that as a process. I don't like having no prep and then yeah. you know write some short breakdown and go to set and then this yeah. has to happen. I cannot do that. So but you're open to suggestions from actors. I mean sometimes somebody feels you know even in, in even in prep when you're so that's where you do all your yeah, yeah. Tutu Meme. See, I work with pretty good. They're, they're all really yeah. good actors. Yeah. So they are not like props, you know. They, yeah. they come in with their own process. Yeah. And yeah. they come in with their own, they, they are co-creating the character. Yeah. So they have ideas that I have not thought of. Yeah. So I will yeah. be open to it. But you know, sometimes you have to bring it back on track. See, yeah. you are the filter. Yeah. You are the, you are, you know what the story is. You know the graph because you've also written it. So it, it's, it's so clear for me yeah. that if that idea adds to my bigger vision, I will grab it. But if it's going to take away, yeah. then I will tell them why it takes away. Yeah. You know, I've, I've never had problems with actors, yeah. thankfully. And then yeah. you're saying when they, by the time they come on set, yeah. there's another kind of magic yeah. that happens. So is there any, from any of your films, anything that you know, you just feel, oh my god, that was a blessing. So of course one OE Institute of uh, Rishi Ji's was, <laughs> was yeah. that. But there's so many things, just things, just, I, I mean, you can't pinpoint. They just happen. They just, uh, I don't know, there's uh, uh, like the scene with in Zindagi where Rithik is like, where, where they make fun of him in the bar, where he's like, I know something about you. Yeah. And he says, he went, he gets rejected at yeah. the arranged marriage. Yeah. It was just that he went to the arranged marriage, but he just tweaked it and he was like rejected and it worked really well. So, you know, things just happen because you're, you're easy, you're prepped, yeah. so you can yeah. just flow, you know. That's a nice space. So to that's be. important. Yeah, that's important that you that you reach the set. Yeah, you know, fully prepared with what's yeah. written. Like even the scene where they're drinking. I mean, we 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 were setting up in that bar. We were working in a bar, and it was the middle of the day. And uh, I just said, please drink. So we all had beers. So they had about two three hours, and they were just trashed because I was like, just drink. <laughs> because you know the scene inside yeah. out. So don't yeah. worry about it. Don't act. just drink. So and they, that's what that's what really they trashed. Yeah, and it was funny. And it, and it comes through, I mean, yeah. so there's, there's a, you know, there's something so special about the screen that whatever an actor and, you know, from the, you know, director to the actor to the screen comes out, you feel, even if you don't spell it out, the audience just gets it. So, you know, when you don't need to, like in Gully Boy, you didn't explain anything. There was a word and you took that word and you put it out there. Did you ever feel a little nervous that... A lot of the audience doesn't know what you know. But if the they don't know, you know, like people like were like, but I didn't know that that's the mother. I'm like, but then when did you find out? In the next scene. I'm like, I'm so like, calm down. down. <laughs> it's okay. You know, like everybody's like, but why didn't you? I, I, you know, like it's a visual medium. I don't need to be told everything. I can see. It. It, it's you know, like I don't understand why everything is shown, then told, then told again. Yeah. I mean, people are not silly. They get it. You know, just let it be. So, so, so I think that the the fact that you trust your audience, you trust an audience. I'm not yeah. even going to say your. You don't yeah. know that you're audience, your audience. Yeah. I mean, so you know, like when. How, so how nervous? And I'm coming back to that. How nervous? Did you think, you know, when you finished Kaliba and you saw the you saw the final DCP and you were like, okay, this is gonna be get to hit Did you did you feel that confidence? Did I, you I don't know. You know, I just know that is this working? For you. Yeah. Is this yeah. working? Is this working in the focus groups? Because I do focus okay. groups. I show my films to people. Okay. I, I do particular people, you know? Yeah. Uh, is that working? Is it working for people I trust? Uh, and is it emotionally moving people? Are they feeling what I want them yeah. to feel? That to me is most important. Now, I don't know how many people are going to get it, how many people are not going to get it. And you know the thing is, you'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. So you just can't go down that road because where, where does it yeah, where end? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of, uh, lot of people who, who write and direct their own films and you know there are certain... Uh, scenes in their films which they feel is like a barometer you know where ye scene mein ye wala reaction aana chahiye ya to log hasne lag jate hain ya to log you know they're surprised or they're moved or whatever in your films i mean is there you know when you when you make your film is there like something which is consistently that you know that it, at this point people when they react like this you just kind of breathe easy going okay i kind of got yeah, you yeah. you want uh, you want people to be silent when certain things happen yeah 
you want people to uh, you know yeah. laugh yeah. you want people to yeah of course yeah. that that because you have put that intent out yeah so you're hoping that it gets and yeah. i don't put background music everywhere yeah Which you know i can't thing. bear that wall to wall background so i don't put it everywhere so it's interesting to see where it goes you know yeah uh, and i it's always worked in fact in my first film i think i made mistakes i think i put yeah. background music in scenes i shouldn't have so uh, I learned from that. Which also brings me to sound design because that's such a you know where people seem to forget audio visual yeah. so audio is right yeah. there. And does it when you're writing already in the script, uh, do you you know can you hear the scene as well as see the scene? And are you that are you really particular that okay I do want? Uh, no, I mean motor uh, 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 motor things yeah. yes of course yeah. uh, kind of vibe of sound yes if yeah. there's songs yeah. but uh, uh, design of uh, specifically it okay. depends on specific things not every time well, are you are you like you know the other end of the spectrum say yahan pe pgm bilkul niche i really want it to be so that would be there are certain scenes there are yeah. there are see there are scenes where like okay like the scene in um the scene with in bali boy where alia and he fight on the phone and break up yeah. i i don't want background music yeah. there because i don't want to tell you how to feel you feel what you want like what yeah. what, what music can be yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. and why should i like or oh, the scene which i think is very key is when farhan meets nasir in oh, yes. in nazir yes. 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 and i went crazy because i had like shankar hasan loy they were like you sure you don't want to score it and i'm like no Then I went into the mix with Anush Mathur, who I love. He's I love amazing. Yeah, exactly. And he was like, "You sure you don't want to score this?" And I was like, "No." Then Belong was like, "You sure you don't want to score?" This? I was like, "Okay, what do you want me to score?" Yeah. And they were like, "No, but like you should give some." I said, "What? What? What feeling?" Mm-hmm. And because I don't want it to be sad, because it's not sad. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to be. I mean, like, what am I? Why should I put anything? Yeah. Preempt anything? Here's a guy who's been wanting to meet his father, and is. he comes there and his father is not really apologetic he did what he had to do yeah. and this guy is like oh my god i could be that person and that person takes no responsibility for anything you know but there's no it has to be so internalized yeah. then you have two banging actors yeah. like mr nasir yeah. and shah and farah yeah. why am i going to ruin the scene <laughs> with some nonsense music at the back so i was like no and you know people like were so silent in the theater You know, and then when Farhan starts, you have no idea how many wow. boys have called me, wow. and then like that scene really moved me. And that you take what you want yeah. from it. Yeah. So those scenes, I feel like I I ruined Mr. Rishi Kapoor's scene in uh, yeah. Lakshmi Chance by scoring it, where he starts crying that yeah. the actors are calling yeah. him. Yeah. And I was really yeah. immature when I made that film because when I look at it now, he's such an amazing actor, mm-hmm. and he killed that scene. And if I had taken that awful music out, <laughs> it would have it would have really affected me more. Yeah, yeah. and I I learned from that, you know. So I feel like when you have a great performance, uh, let it be. Let people feel what they feel. It 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 affects people more. Yeah. So you've also worked with uh, you you've worked mainly with Rima, of course, in all your. Only with Rima, pretty much, and right. Vijay, right? Uh, but in terms of your technical crew, mm. there's been, you know, there's all kinds of uh, cinematographers and audiographers, and but Suzanne is someone whom uh, you've also consistently. I've done two films with Suzanne. Yeah. Yeah. I did Zindagi with her, and I did uh, Gali Boy with her. I could, I'd, I do all my work with her. Yeah. Uh, she's a production de- designer. She's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. Uh, but she doesn't want to work on films that much. You know, she does a lot of commercials. she uh, is half the time not in the country you know so whenever i get her she's the one i want to work with i've worked with carlos catalan yeah. on uh, four films yeah. uh, three features yeah. and one short yeah. uh, he's amazing yeah. he wasn't free to do okay. uh, um, gali boy yeah. so i worked with jay hoza who is incredible yeah. Yeah. he uh, did uh, made in heaven with me the first two episodes that's where i met him and yeah so oh, you shot that first yeah oh. so i did two episodes of that and then i came on to gali oh. so i just took him with me No, he's he's really he's very good. Yeah. yeah. And then you also uh, when you're working with different, but I mean, also consistently worked with Shankar Sanoi, who yeah. like you know so they are amazing. And and uh, but then again, Gali Boy had like 
A yeah, whole because like, Telugu had to have the music of yeah the musicians a whole that it was about. Yeah. yeah. So there was no. I mean, I called them and I told mm-hmm. them. I said, I'm doing this film and. Uh, I have to use them, and they were like, "You have to use them." Yeah, I mean, they were just so <laughs> cool. But I can't wait to work with them. They're really amazing, Shankar and Sanjay. I find them amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then, how does it? How you know? How uh, you know that whole rapport building? Because that's a very intimate working with a with your key, uh, you know, A team is such an intimate uh, yeah. process professionally. And everything, of course, because also filmmaking itself. You know, we we don't know where our days start, where they yeah. end. What so when you're when you're you know when you're approaching a new technician, how is how is that whole? You know, I mean, do you kind of see the vibe? Do you see how they I react to the vibe? Because I work mainly with uh, the same gang. Yeah. Uh, so Arjun the same, Punamita same costume, uh, hair makeup wardrobe is the same. Carlos has done all my films. My first AD is the Spanish guy Luis Casa Coberta. He's done three features with me. Yeah. Uh, my core, my crew is more or less the same, so uh, it's very important uh, what vibe comes in. You know, it's very important what kind of energy comes in, and uh, yeah, like I, I, I like a happy set. Yeah. I don't like yeah, I don't like too much drama and screaming and like we are making yeah. movies. Yeah. Now. Like, everyone calm down. You know, like so I like a happy set. I like I like people to have a positive space. I like the crew to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think people should be working 18-20 hours a day. I think everybody yeah. should have a day off once a yeah. week. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. You know? yeah. So I like. Uh, I, I, it's very important for me what kind of energy comes in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and they're all my friends. So you don't feel like life is passing you by. Yeah. And uh, it's very uh, blessed. It's very lucky. I go to work with my buddies. Yeah. yeah. So which is so different from you know the whole traditional. Uh, old school, you know, where where people would come in and throw tantrums, and actors are kind of landing up late just to show their whole stardom and stuff. And now, of course, you know, there's a whole new breed of filmmakers, and and they're they're very, you know, prudent. कि हम बहुत ही अच्छी जगह में हम अच्छा काम कर सकते हैं, professional हो सकते हैं, disciplined भी हो सकते हैं, और दोस्तों के साथ काम कर सकते हैं. So you've also seen, you know, when you've you've uh, seen your your mom being an assistant and you know working with this, your dad's been a writer with, and they've obviously worked with all kinds of people, all kinds of voices. So when when you were growing up and you know you want to make film, you you know you you know this is my uh, where I'm going to really be living. Have there been lessons that you've kind of seen and heard, and you've been like, मेरे को ये नहीं करना. मेरे को ऐसे नहीं बनना। I mean, no, I don't mean, don't take names, of course, but have there been like situations where your, you know, parents, somebody has come home and said, oh, it's kind of like frustrating. You know, you know? I don't want to work with anybody, no matter how successful they are, if they're going to alter my vision. I'm not interested. That's it. I don't care who you are. I feel like I'm here. I'm spending three years making a movie. I want to put something out there, and I may totally screw it up. I may, you know, but mm-hmm. it should be my screw up. Yeah. You know, and and I don't want to late. I want to learn from that, and the learning can't be I shouldn't have worked with you. That I should go <laughs> now. You know, so I don't want to work with people who are going to come in there and uh, it becomes about something else. You know what I mean? I'm not interested in that. Like I don't care enough. So, so would you advise, uh, you know, youngsters who come in and there is a lot of, so there's a lot of bullying that does happen. See, it's a very you know, tricky uh, yeah, situation. Yeah. I can say this four films down, yeah. three films down, you know. Uh, but when you, it's your first film, you're getting a break. You're gonna work with an actor, and that that's how your film's gonna get made. You can't, you don't have the luxury of this. Yeah. But you have to, you have to find a way to keep your vision intact. You know, and then you have to figure out what you want out of your life if and when you get into a position to do so. But you can't on the onset do that because if you want to do that, more power to you. Yeah. Then you make your film in that much budget. With yeah. You, you know, then yeah. do it, and more power to you. Yeah. But if you want that money and you want to work with that kind of thing, and you want, thing and yeah, all. then you have to work it out smartly. But right yeah. now, I rather take a pay cut and make what I want <laughs> than torture myself. But then, what about? You know, youngsters who don't have that luxury right now, and they're, you know, they they're really hungry and they're really and they they reach a point and suddenly they're bullied, and like you're saying, you know, they can't afford to probably back off because it's it's out there, it's uh, it's this big ticket. 
so either they you know they they allowing their vision to get uh, i would like i mean this is an ideal world yeah. i think i would say if you have a script that requires money wait wait on it. make a film that you can make put your voice out there your first film should be about you it shouldn't be about anyone else so you should just wait on it make a smaller film where you have the control you know and where you can uh, your voice is out you know it's you and it's unique so i would say wait and if not then uh, you know you better be a great politician <laughs> be able to win it yeah yeah, yeah. Just two three things which um, you know definitely everybody would like. They have must they have in mind. All the films which you have made till now, uh, as an audience, uh, you get a feeling of a completeness in the films. Your music is always to the mark. Your photography is brilliant. Your editing is fantastic. Actors are too good. Actors, upcoming actors are sitting here. The upcoming writers sitting here. Upcoming cinematographers are sitting here. This very rarely happens when you see a film. Film, whether it's a hit or not a hit, is not important. But when I go to see your film, and I'm sure everybody here sitting in the audience also must be having this kind of a mind. कि हम दोहरे की फिल्म देखने जा रहे हैं, तो हमें ये जो various departments हैं, इसमें भी excel करता हूँ आपको दिखेगा. Your music has been your uh, forte. All your films, all films music has been brilliant. How do you work on your music? This is what. I think we all I, should know. Yeah, I have no musical uh, talent. I can't play an instrument. I can't sing. I, I'm the only person in my family that is tone deaf. Uh, I am obsessed with music. I listen to it a lot. Uh, so what I tend to, I weirdly write uh, to music. Like I play music and write, which is a huge problem for my co-writer Rima because she can't bear it, uh, and she's just like I can't think. So because we are sometimes in the same room and we, she's writing on her laptop and I'm on mine, so I put my headphones on. But it gets me into a zone, and I have a playlist which is only for writing, and uh, it puts yeah. me in a zone and it plays and it See? feels like yeah, it's just like you're just channeling. Uh, but uh, having said that, I'm very clear of the kind of vibe and feeling and mood I want to create. in that so i reference it and uh, shankar hasan loy have cracked me because i'm not very articulate i can't be like farhan can come in and be like uh, that uh, uh, cello and i don't know that i'll be like that sound there you know so i'm not articulate but they know they have understood me yeah. they've understood what i'm saying and they they get it so i i can reference it i know the feeling i want to evoke if that feeling is correct i go with it so Yeah. Act, there are a lot of lot, lot of uh, upcoming actors. In fact, seventy percent of the crowd today is they belong to schools, returning actors. I want you to uh, tell all these young, uh, for you know, future stars of us, schools, uh, drama schools, teachers, everything is fine. You you get inspired watching films and all that. What is that one thing you, as the director and the maker of the film? want them to work on it cannot be one thing but you know, you know i how... feel like two three things about acting is a very strange profession like you have to call an emotion uh like this you know you have to cry on call you have to get angry on call you have to access parts of you uh and to do it well you have to be you have to really go in to come out I mean, your, the behavior that we expect from actors is very weird, you know. And then after cut, we expect them to be normal. That's not going to happen. They are weird people <laughs> because we are expecting them to do weird things because they're emotionally like they're wired differently. But I think to be an actor, I think it's very important to have empathy. I think you need to be able to have a sense of getting into another person's shoes. and for that you need to be able to look at them with understanding and empathy who is this person why did they do what they did no matter who they are where do they come from then they can't be judgment i feel like you can't judge the character you're playing you have to empathize with it so i think the first thing you have to do is when you're observing people you know and observing people means you can pick up a habit from someone you can pick up a tick from someone you can pick up a speech pattern from someone you can pick up a, a anything a weakness a a sore point an achilles heel whatever you pick up like i feel 
Just look at people with empathy. The second thing is, I think with actors is, forget your vanity. Just leave it at the door. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the director would be about the color Do not be self-conscious. <laughs> it is extremely unattractive on camera. I mean, yes, look your best in life and be fit and, you know, because you have to when your face is blown up. So, to 40 feet. So, I know that the feeling, what that must feel like. But when you're playing a part, you can't come in there and worry how you look. You just cannot do that. The ones that are the most unself-conscious in a screen test are the ones that come out the most. You know, don't worry about how you look. People will take care of how you look, you know. Um, and the third thing I think is when you are working with other actors in a frame, be generous. Don't try to hog the scene. Don't try to, it's not your scene. Chill out, be, stay back. You know, be generous. Give as much as you can get from the other. The, once you lift the co-actor, it will lift your scene. Yeah, That's what it is. <laughs> My question is, uh, when I was watching Belly Boy, so there is one scene where uh, Ali and Ranveer used to meet, the bridge. And then, when the interval is going to happen, we see that it is crowded with the all the garbage and everything is there. And I think so what you said about the visual medium, I think so that takes a lot of like courage to do it because everybody demands and when the movie ends also like uh, he does like this and then and everybody was like oh this is new. So how do you like, how the story you just tell a like little short kind of uh, story within a frame, how do you do that? Like within one frame you give us something, some nuance about the character or some side story. How do you do that? Because I have seen only make filmmakers like Bergman and Wes Anderson doing that. So uh, how do you do that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, we, okay, I'll just talk to you about the bridge. Uh, we had written, then they meet on a bridge, on a foot bridge, you know. And then we looked at stuff uh, all over Dharavi and one of my production boys found this. And it was tiny, but it kind of connected buildings to the slum. It uh, was, you know, so there was a space where both of them can come from each side. Uh, there was something very uh, ugly and beautiful about it. I don't know how to explain it. It was Bombay. You know, uh, there was like, there was just beauty and love in this film. And uh, there was something I thought very cinematic about it. Uh, we spent, we had three or four scenes there. And we knew that each scene, we didn't want to see the same thing. So the first scene you don't see it, the second scene you see the train, the third scene you just see them all. So we wanted to make sure that every time we see that bridge, we look at it differently. You know, and we see something else. So I think it was just part of that approach. Hi, my name is Hi. Rashmi. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on the success of the film. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, so I have been following uh, from luck by chance. Now, um, the only thing which I really believe in my life is that no one is just a protagonist and no one is just an antagonist. Mm -hmm. We all are grey shade in our real life. This is what I believe. If I, if I may be a positive person to someone, some other person would be abusing me. So that's how we all are in our real, our real lives. What also I've seen in your film is, is that all your protagonists are also grey shared in their real life in order to um, come over that situation in their life. So is it like a conscious call that you take? Like for suppose, um, example, Ranveer Singh is into carjacking <coughs> or Zindagi Na Miligi Dubara, like Hrithik Roshan is trying to make money or Farhan Akhtar is just trying to come up with his philandering ways or something like that. So probably, um, not just subjecting a character to a positive person or a negative person, but exploring more into the grey shit that is real. Uh, yeah, you want to create, you want to create uh, human beings. You know, I am not making superhero films. I am making films about people that exist. Please sit down. Uh, people that exist. And I think when you want to create human beings or you want to look at human behaviour, uh, there are many things that make us. You know, we, we have a lot of weaknesses, a lot of complexes, a lot of uh, insecurities, plus a lot of strength and a lot of joy and a lot of positivity, a lot of ambition and drive and all those things. So it's, it's important to have kind of rounded characters. And uh, 
I mean, it's that's just, it, and it's much more interesting. I find like someone who's just good, like really boring. You know, they just, they just bore me. So uh, it's just that. Also, uh, Ranveer is not into car jacking. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 participating in the. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's desperation. <laughs> I just want to know what motivated you to shoot uh, Galla Gudia the way you did and what were the challenges that you faced? Uh, actually, uh, my DP, Carlos Catalan, uh, he was the big factor in the way Galla Gudia was shot because uh, when I told him that we are going to shoot the song and I want to do like a Punjabi song because uh, it is a Punjabi family and I've never ever been in Delhi where some music like this hasn't played and there hasn't been a dance party and he was like we can't shoot it like every other film because he's Spanish so he just watches uh, promos uh, on TV and he's like we can't do this and I'm like okay so what can we do and he was like let's do it like a home video and uh, so it started from there and then we were like if it's a home video we don't cut so uh, we uh, were like okay let's do this in one in one shot and then it was like how do we do this we have 25 actors so we called Bosco and Caesar and we told them that we're gonna do this and they just loved the idea. So uh, what we had to do was, when we went on a recce, we measured the ship deck that we were gonna shoot it on, exactly. Gave it to Bosco and Caesar. They taped the dance hall to that size and space. Uh, they took 25 dancers, each one had a, a, a sticker saying what character they were playing. I sat with Bosco, I briefed him about each character of those 25, who they are, where they fit in, who they are to each other, what they are. And he choreographed like an entire skit with it. Uh, and he showed it to us, we tweaked a few things. It was incredible. You can't do this without technicians like that. And you can't do this without actors that don't go and rehearse every day. Okay, so all my actors, all the six leads and every other actor that was on that film went into rehearsal. When we were on the ship, Bosco Caesar came in three days earlier and they would rehearse every day. Uh, and I had a, a, a Spanish uh, Steadicam operator called Peque Griffin, who's, he's unbelievable. He was on Zindagi with me. So I called him, I'm like, dude, you need to come in for this song. He came in the night before and uh, he just shot it. He wow. just shot it. In, like it was a five minute take and I had a Spanish focus pull up, not one soft shot. And you cannot do this without actors that understand what you're doing and rehearse this. They were, and uh, uh, Priyanka had like 103 fever when we shot that. You can't tell, she's just outstanding. So, you, thank you. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. My name is Arjun Rudiani. Hi. And I'm from Actor Prepares. Uh, my question for you is, ma'am, whether it's uh, like slum of Mumbai or it's the hills of, uh, you know, Borneo, Spain, you have the precision of direction that makes a uh, shoot really, really perfect. So from where you get that precision of direction? I don't know what that means. I think, uh, you know, I, I honestly believe that I, I go with what I want the person to feel. It's like, oh, I, uh, okay. So every, let, let me just tell you in a broader way. Like every film I've done has been about one thing whether the audience knows it or they don't know it. One thing is a story running. But beyond that, Luck by Chance was about self-esteem. It was about how people feel about themselves. Zindagi was about Carpe Diem, Seize the Day. Dil was about projection, about pretension. And Gully Boy was basically about class, the film. Now these are the broad strokes that I have for myself and my technical crew knows, right? Now everything in the film, from the story, to the art, to the camera, to everything, should somewhere, the way the camera moves, everything, should make you subliminally and subtext-wise have this feeling, whether you know it or not, right? So when you are deciding on how to shoot something, you have to go for what are you trying to say in that scene. Like, like everybody, I, you know, they, I just, like how many people ask me, it was so brave of you that Rithik Roshan is not running in the center in Zindagi. I, I did not even think that Rithik Roshan should run in the center. Because he's Rithik. I was like, why will Rithik Roshan? What do you mean? And they were like, like, you didn't put Rithik Roshan in the middle. And I'm so glad that Rithik Roshan is as cool as he is because even he didn't bring it up. Because no, it was Abhay's story. At that point for me, it's, 
Abhay started this trip, he's ending this trip, they've had their moment underwater and whatever, this is Abhay. There was no question in anyone's head. So I'm saying every decision then becomes about what are you trying to say? So I think once you know what is your film about and does everything lead up to that, to that mood, to that feeling, to that subtext, to that scene, I think you'll be fine. Fantastic. I'm Sanfana. I am from FTII. Um, so my question was about uh, sound. So in Gully Boy, we have a lot of live performances uh, going on, and, um, and they were playback. I suppose they weren't. Uh, I mean, they weren't oh, performing they? live yeah. uh, when while. So do you feel? Uh, I don't know. It was your call as a director, or the sound designer, or sound mixer's call. But do you feel if uh, they would have been? Uh, it, even if they were playback, they could have made sound like live performances in the post. So, do you? It was a conscious. Like, I would love to know the procedure that uh, how. The no, sometimes you do. <laughs> like in the bar when Kambhari singing uh, 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 the Kambhari track with him, Tang Tang. We call it Tang Tang, the Kambhari track, uh, and that sounds live. Whether it's uh, Jingo Khan. And the thing, because we have a mic and we have the thing, so that sounds live. All the stuff on stage, all the rap battles, those sound live. Uh, Ranveer, but you know, you have to push, you have to take a creative call. Like, uh, we did a mix with the crowd in Apna Time Aiga, but you know, that's your climax. And the audience wants to feel high. So you can't make it so real that they're not feeling it. It's got to, they got to feel it in their solar plexus. It's a movie at the end of the day. So you have to, it has to be a conscious call between uh, what's real and design and what is going to lift it. Hi ma'am. Hi. Uh, so my question to you is, and I'm sure you've been asked this question a lot of times. Um, as a director, you must envision what your character must, should look like, right? So when you, when you finally decide to cast an actor for your character, do you go for suitability or do you go for an actor who doesn't suit the character as much but is a very, is a very talented actor? Uh, depends. I mean, uh, there have been, um, both things have happened. Uh, both things have happened, you know. But if push came to shove, I would go for the better actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, my Hi. question to you is that we all know, so you met Siddhan Chaturvedi at a party. I think we all know that. Yeah. So you just saw him and you said, you know, you should audition for this part. So do all directors have that quality that they can just see someone and say that you are <laughs> speaking for all directors? I uh, am speaking for my entire uh, fraternity. I have no idea, but I'm sure. See, sometimes you're, you know, you're uh, like, I was three weeks away from shoot. And I hadn't cast Shay. And it was a very, very important part. And uh, uh, Nandini uh, and me, we were panicking a little bit. So I think when it's in your consciousness, huh, then you're looking, I think. I mean, I don't think if I wasn't looking for the part, I would have reacted to him. You know, when you're, when you're looking actively and it's something in your head that's playing, I think you should just be open. Your energy should be open. Because I think the universe just provides. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think, I, and also I hadn't seen him in Inside Edge, uh, which was really lucky because he's so skinny and scrawny and, you know, I maybe would not have connected. I would have, I would have seen him differently. I don't know who he was at all. And he just was there and he was just dancing and he can, he can dance. He can, he has a, he can move, you know. So I was just like, who's this guy? And he was big and, you know, very good looking and, uh, it was just perfect and I was just saying I'm going to talk to him and I said, God, please make him an actor. <laughs> you know, like, please, please be an actor. And he was like, yeah, when he said yes, I was like, please come in tomorrow and audition. So it just happened. Hi Zoya. Uh, Hi. It's a real pleasure to hear you in person and I followed your work. Um, uh, so my question was about influences. You've been surrounded by great influences including your parents, Meera and I, who've been your greatest influences in uh, filmmaking. Did you ever struggle to find your own voice in that sea of influences? And uh, the third question is, do you feel like you've evolved as a filmmaker in the last 10 years and how? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, have, I still get very influenced by a lot of uh, artists and people, very influenced. 
Um, I'm very um, uh, inspired, I would say. You know, sometimes competitive, sometimes jealous, and this. <laughs> you know, you come out of a great movie and you're like, damn, you know? <laughs> like, I could, can I ever make this? Why didn't I think of this? Or why didn't I, you know? That, that happens, and I think that it's, it's good. I think it's very good to happen. Uh, but um, have I, uh, you, I think, I think when we were growing up, uh, I think both our parents were very, um, they were very uh, aware of allowing us to have our say. You know, we were always asked our opinion on things. We were always asked to weigh in on how we felt. Uh, and I think uh, we already had our voice. You know, I think they just, inca we, I, I, now when I look back, I think we already had a, we didn't have to agree with them. It didn't matter. <laughs> you know, I think that uh, was, uh, I, I would thank them because they allowed, if they are okay to disagree. In my family, we agree to disagree. <laughs> it's fine. Everybody doesn't need to be on the same page. And I think that really helped in uh, not having to fit in or not worrying about how you fit into the herd and being able to analyze something, being able to think it through, not just looking at things on the surface, you know, really going deeper into anything that, like, I mean, I can take a story about a boy who's a rapper and make the film, but actually let me go deeper into it. Where's he coming from? Where's his hands from? Who is he? What are his influences? What are his family? I think those things came from the way we were brought up, actually. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, firstly, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Ashok Ji and IFTDA for organizing this uh, Me too. Thank you, sir. Thank this you. dialogic session. Thank and, you. Uh, so my question is, you talked about uh, gangster movies, right? I wanted, to know, I wanted to know what facets are required to make one because given the quantity of gangster movies that are, that are being made in today's times, uh, what? How do you make your gangster movie stand out? I don't know. I don't have a script. <laughs> I'm still waiting. I don't know yet. When I make it, I'll tell you. <laughs> Hi. Good evening. Hi. I'm from FTI. That's what he told me from the institute. Uh, my question is, uh, I see a pattern in your films where uh, Javed Sahib's uh, poetry comes so seamlessly and uh, can you please talk about uh, that process, that how you bring uh, his poetry into your films, that creates a very wonderful moments. that's the feeling that we take back home. Thank you. I, I actually, I love poetry. I really do. I, I read a lot of poetry and uh, it just happens to be his poetry because he's the uh, He's a great poet and he's very accessible to me. So, <laughs> so I just make him do all my work. Yeah, but um, I, I, I like I like that. For me, you see, uh, basically with Gully Boy, the film is about a poet. So it had to have poetry. There was no way around it. Uh, with Zindagi, uh, it was uh, we wanted it to be a trip that's cathartic for the people. We wanted it to be something where you take something like adventure sports which all my male friends do like Farhan is a skydiver Homi Adajania who's my college mate and a very close friend of mine is a filmmaker as well is a deep sea diver he wrote all those scenes with me Farhan wrote the skydiving scenes with me all my male friends are into like and so are a lot of my female friends as well uh, into adventure sports but I didn't want it to just be testosterone for that film. I wanted it to be cathartic in a very poetic fashion. I wanted it to be slightly deeper because at least my experiences with boys and going on tons of road trips with a bunch of them, uh, they don't talk much, you know. It's pretty internalized. Like, I, I mean, they, they, they're, they're great. Like, if I ever have a heartache, I call my male friends because there's not all that crap, you know. It's just like, dump him. <laughs> and you're like, it's so simple, you know. When did he call? When did she call? What happened? Who called first? None of that. You just be like, oh, that's not good. Dump him. That kind of advice. It's very good. So I needed to go lower into my poetry was seen like a great vehicle for him to be a closet poet because nothing about the character of Imran is uh, on the surface is deep. And he's yeah. scared of death. And he's scared to show death. And he's uh, he just doesn't want any kind of hurt. You know, but inside it's all there. So it, the poetry was a nice form to use. 
uh, for him and for a visual treatment. And I like it very much, so I mean, I might just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, so, in a movie like Gully Boy, where Dharavi is kind of a character uh, which is standing with Murad continuously, so how do you intend to connect with other parts of India when you are showing Dharavi? Like, for example, Arunachal Pradesh, audience from Arunachal Pradesh, or audience from Kashmir. So, internationally, it is easy to connect because internationally, Dharavi is famous. But uh, the way they talk or the way they communicate, the people from Dharavi, they are very open, they are very uh, badass uh, compared to people from other parts of India. So, uh, did you even like, did you have a concern, sort of concern, like how will you connect with the audience from Delhi or audience from Kashmir or Arunachal Pradesh? I mean, it is a concern, I suppose, but you know, you can't, uh, you can't dilute what you're doing for that. Yeah. You know, because I watch films from all over the world. Um, I watch films, uh, you know, um, like I, I watch films from cultures that I have not stepped into. Like I know nothing of, I know nothing about. But uh, we are all human beings and the humanity connects, the, feel, the emotional resonance will translate uh, and it will come through, you know. Uh, and, uh, and you always have subtitles. <laughs> Yes. I want to know what's the one thing that you most love about your job and what's the one thing that you most detest about it? Uh, I love... Uh, there's no one thing, I just love everything about my job, actually. <laughs> I, uh, what I hate about my job is... Um, what do I hate about the job? I don't particularly like uh, 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 promotions. <laughs> I don't like that part because by the time I get to that part, I'm so tired, you're exhausted because you've just delivered the film yeah. and then you want to, you know, then you want to do your key interviews with people that are asking you sensible questions, that are interested in the film you've put out. Like, I don't like promotions, like, it's just rubbish half the time. And can you sing? No. I'm a filmmaker. Please, Dana, please rap kije. I'm like, I'm not going to rap. You can rap. Yeah. Kya marriages heaven mein bane hai? I'm like, no. There is no heaven. So, you know, so that, by then, I'm very tired. And that part of the job, I just don't, I don't enjoy it. I get annoyed. So yeah, that part I don't like. But what I love is, I love writing. When I'm writing, I want to direct. When I'm directing, I want to edit. When I'm editing, I hate it. Then I have to go back to shoot. So I just like everything. I just like something else more while I'm doing something. <laughs> That's it. Hi, my name is Agastya. Hi. Uh, my question to you was that, uh, what I noticed, uh, a similarity between uh, Luck by Chance and Gully Boy was that, in Luck by Chance, when Farhan Akhtar's character kind of, you know, cheats on Konkana Sen's character and at the end they have kind of that and whatever Franakta says and Konkana has a certain re response to that and compared to when uh, Murad and uh, Zafina meet in Zafina's uh, uh, washroom uh, they have a completely different, uh, you know, response like Zafina has a completely different response to what Konkana Sen's character has to what and the relationship is really different. So, what was your take on that? Like, uh, what kind of approach did you have for that? I was just, it just, it was just really curious to me. I mean, they're very different worlds. They're very different people, different personalities, and their relationships are completely different. So, uh, I mean, they couldn't have possibly responded in the same manner. They're completely different women, those characters, and the men are totally different. I mean, and the the solidarity of uh, Murad and Safina is not the same with uh, Vikram and Sona. And uh, I think she knows why he wants to be with her because he's feeling a bit lost. But he'll go again, he's gonna do it again. And she doesn't really need that. So I think that's a very different equation. Uh, I mean, I never even thought about it till you've asked me about Lak Pajan. Hi, I'm Bandita Bora from Assam and Rima Katki is my, yeah, I am a fan of her. Her screenplay is also good and you are so fabulous. Thank you. The, uh, boy. So, uh, I'm uh, working in direction department, so I want to ask question of that. Uh, like, uh, first question is, um, what is your short division storyboard processing? Because sometimes what happened that we have something and the DOP also, uh, he has his own advices. One second. 
ऐसा कभी हुआ है कि एक्टर आया और ही इज़ आउट ऑफ द कैरेक्टर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ इज पर्सनल प्रॉब्लम्स और समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड यू टुक टाइम टू गेट हिम बैक टू द कैरेक्टर uh okay so first uh, the short breakdown what i like to do as a process is i work with my dp before we get anywhere we just sit on the script so he and me will talk about the script and we will firstly decide what like what what is this film about how do we want to approach that feeling with camera and what are my rules i i like i like rules on set like i like certain design rules because i feel like it gives a cohesive feeling uh, like in dil rakhne to we have uh, no close ups we have only about two close ups everything is a mirror of wire because we wanted the sense of watching these people we wanted the sense of seeing it like like pluto was watching them you know so we didn't want to be that internalized with them we used mirrors for people to reflect with each other we had we had certain rules for in a uh, gully boy there's no blue there's no tarpaulin blue i don't know if anyone's noticed yeah. there's no blue in the film so uh, we we have certain laws that we stick to and we stick to it doggedly uh, camera wise we decide the shooting style of the film and what i like to do is i like to do a rough breakdown of the scene on my computer uh, uh and so i'll take the scene and be like we should see this way this way this way this way this way like i definitely want to be close here this would be nice to do one shot whatever once we do that once i go on my tech recce once my locations have been picked we go on the tech recce then the dp and me we have what we decided we look and see if we can do that or should we sh- tweak it when we are on the location because then suddenly you see different angles something so then we we'll tweak it there we'll change it and then once that happens once you come to set with the actors you block it and if it works it works if you have to change it to change it but we have a plan i don't storyboard my whole film i find it very boring mm-hmm. i only storyboard action and i storyboard stunts that's it so i storyboard the bulls i was storyboard the skydive i was storyboard you know running uh, the what do you call the deep sea diving uh, certain car sequences if they need to but i don't storyboard the whole film hi pr here uh my question was actually about something you said a while earlier a uh, reshoot how does that work do you rewrite quite a bit of your film do you reshoot any part of it is is that a, honestly i feel very guilty about that process just generally why no, i've never reshot anything rewrite also doesn't sort of no you rewrite while you're scripting you do rewrites you change things but you don't rewrite after you've done the film Okay. <laughs> right. I have done patchwork shoots, so I have uh, shot something where I needed some information. That I've done, but I never re-shot a scene. Hi Zoya. Hi. Uh, लड़की boring नहीं थी. अरे how are you? First class, how are you? <laughs> okay, so I wanted to ask you this question because I've been observing all your movies. Uh, so you do project a lot of strained relationships between the son. or the daughter for that matter and the parent so if you were to mm-hmm. do a gangster movie how would you show that i am loving these questions because now i'm manifesting this gangster yeah. <laughs> uh, i have no idea so uh, i've seen uh, made in heaven <laughs> okay. and uh, usse pehle gali boy pe dekhi thi so uh, i don't know aapko ye acha lagega nahi but made in heaven mujhe bahut zyada better laga aur bahut zyada acha laga thank you like uh, kahan se aa rahi hai dekha tha to wo main lagatar dekhta rahta hu aur dusra ye ek series hai jo main lagatar ek hi raat mein pura dekh gaya so uh, question mere ye hai ki made in heaven mein har ek uh, episode mein koi na koi problem hoti hai mere like is it just a part of the screen play ki koi problem aayegi arise hogi aur fir wo baad mein uh, uska koi solution milega uh, like कोई भी मतलब मैरिज हो सकती थी उसमें अकॉर्डिंग टू मी जिसमें कि शायद कोई प्रॉब्लम ना होती विदाउट एनी प्रॉब्लम वो मैरिज हो सकती पहले तो firstly it is not a problem in the marriage it's a wedding <laughs> firstly uh, this show is not about marriages this show is about weddings they are wedding planners uh, uh, so if you are they are wedding planners and their job is to it's like saying uh let's do a show uh, let's do a show about uh uh doctors but somebody could have come in and they were sick no it can't happen so they have to sort things out so the part of their job even they said it 
uh, many times. But uh, this is what happens. That's the that's that's why we made the show because I have friends that work in the business and they end up doing things that they're not meant to do. Beyond you just because I mean. Indian families, we are obsessed as a culture with marriage and weddings. We are obsessed. We save all our money for this wedding day. <laughs> Every, everybody's family and their mom arrives. And uh, people like, emotions are riding really high. People are going crazy. And a lot of the stuff that we've got in the show is uh, stuff that we've got from A, our friends. Uh, like things that have happened to them. Or the wedding planners that we consulted. These stories have come from them. So this is what happens and uh, this is why it makes good viewing. If there was no problem in it, you'd be bored. Good evening ma'am. Krishna Vikashi, actress for press, screen writing student. Ma'am, how do you prepare your notes and uh, your references before going for any writing? And uh, how deep you go into char characterization and uh, what are your outcomes of writer's block? Uh, Thank you. I mean, I uh, uh, research, I don't start writing for a while. I actually spend a lot of time interviewing people, taking notes, reading up on the subject, hanging around in spaces that I'm going to write about. Uh, I did a road trip in Spain before I went to Zindagi. I actually want to experience it and be there and spend time and uh, interview people, like just do stuff. Uh, then I, Rima and me would talk, 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 talk. And we have a beginning and a middle and an end. We know where the characters are going. Only after that will I start writing. So I take a lot of time to research and you just have to find all the material you can and sift through it. You don't have to read everything and bore yourself. You know what the interest areas are. And uh, that's it. And what was your other question? Writer's block. Uh, writer's block. Uh, you know, there's, you have to just go back there the next day. There's no way out. There is no way out. Like, you, no, no, you, you have to have the discipline. Like, I go to work from 10 to 4 or 10 to 5 when I'm writing and we take a break in the middle to eat and whatever. But 10 to 5 we're there. And if nothing is coming, we'll watch a documentary about the subject or we'll watch another movie that can be referenced or we'll do something else. But uh, we'll be there. You know, there's no, there's no... I mean, kill some character I mean, some ideas. Maybe. <laughs> that way. Thank you very much. Uh, we are coming to the end of this uh, great master class. Thank you. We need a, we need a uh, standing ovation for Zoya. You know, she has been... Uh, she has been... Uh, uh, I will invite uh, my PC members who stand by to organize the entire thing. All my AC members on the stage. Uh, I wish you to all my committee members. My colleague, the Kiki Bolliji. My Islamic Jali. You can come. The entire team of Iftina which works day in and day out for uh, really creating this magic. Not only here, but other organizations also. They're all uh, brilliant short filmmakers, writers, directors who really do wonderful assistant directors. Uh, I want to make a small announcement. I think you all will be very happy to know. It's come out, we are working on from last 10-15 uh, days. Um, I was supposed not to announce this, but I'm announcing because I want to announce it in front of Zoya, Josie and everyone. Iftira very soon is starting a filmmaking school. Where uh, we uh, will, with the support of everybody, with all the directors, cinematographers, editors, everyone, they're all part of Ifrida, they're all there. And we really want to do something good. We really want to see to it that everybody here today, who is here, we're very positive about it. Get the correct training, get the correct learning, and they all become brilliant filmmakers and brilliant you know, uh, makers of this of this country, they shine. That is that is that is the dream of Ustina, and I'm sure this dream will one day, uh, you know, uh, be uh, very uh, clear, and we will be successful in, in in doing that. We will take the help of FTII, we'll take the help of Anupam K's Institute, we'll take help of every institute here and there, all the makers, all the teachers. 
to see to it that IFTA's film school becomes a great success. Uh, we also have a, a, a producer here, uh, uh, Rajan. Uh, Rajan, uh, uh, I was very happy to know that he had, made, he had produced a film called Shwas, a Marathi film which uh, was won to the Oscar. Rajan, please come up. I um, came to know later on, otherwise I would have invited him earlier. We need such producers, we need such people who really make help uh, making good uh, cinema. Rajan, uh, I'm sure you must have a tough time to make this kind of a film. I would like Zoya to present this uh, bouquet to uh, Rajan. Rajan I will request uh, Haman from the Anupam Kays Institute who has always stood. Always stood with us like a rock. Uh, thank you uh, for being with us, uh, Haman. And all the flowers and bouquets to all of you.